tell us about that process of when you first discover something like that, like you said, it's easier said than done. The voices are so loud. Mm -hmm. There's so much inner judgment. Yeah. You know, our inner critic is so painful to Definitely. live with. And now when you're saying, oh, I've, I'm trying to work on making it a friend, which is a beautiful transition. Tell us a bit about that journey of inner critic to inner friend. Well, to be honest, I've been to four treatment centers and I have a lot of opinions on, you know, rehabs, if you will, or, you know, places to go. There's a lot that I don't agree with, but um, what I will say is throughout all of it, learning lessons through dialectical behavior therapy or um, cognitive behavioral therapy, there's something that's always been embedded in me throughout all of those different moments in my life. And that was always to recognize when something was happening to me, accepting it. And I think once I realized that this was something that wasn't going to go away, this wasn't something that was going to be fixed by going to these places. Mm. It was more so what can I know about myself? Okay. If I, if I kind of go down this road, I'm going to get triggered and I know that feeling and I know how to avoid it. However, I go to therapy. I also have, you know, medication that I fully am on that I believe in full heartedly and it helps me stay balanced, but I still have to deal with it. You know, I still have days that are pretty low and moments that I'm just too over the top and I'm like, I want to buy everyone a house and <laughs> I want to save the world. Um, but I just, I've learned to kind of understand it. And the best part about that is also my family and friends learning how to live with it too. They can be great friends to me in that way. And yeah. that took a lot of time as well. Yeah, no, these are such, you know, I, I know that you do so much work in this space, but today when I'm hearing you share all these insights and they genuinely are insights, they're so powerful because even you just saying like, I had to realize that I don't have to fix it mm -hmm. or that it's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. Like these things make difficult things livable with. Right. Uh, and when we look at the seasons or we look at the weather, it's like, you know, it's going to rain one day and you know, it's going to be dark one day, and you know, it's going to be sunny another day. And when you know that you stop trying to fight it and change right. it, yeah, you can accept it, which it sounds what, from what I'm hearing from you. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's taken me a long time. It's, um, that's not six years. That's probably 10 years mm. in reality, but it, it really, it's really been interesting and I feel better and I feel great now that I can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. The thing you keep mentioning today is letting go. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us are trying to know how to let go of old selves, old parts of ourselves, or, or parts that don't serve us anymore. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I, when I lived as a monk, some of the areas that we'd live in, there were often, we'd come across a lot of snake skin. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'd always use snakes as an analogy of how mm. we leave behind. So snakes don't break out. They don't rip their skin off, they slither out right. and their skin just kind of like falls away. Yes. And then we would naturally not find snakes, thankfully, and find yes. snake skin. But that analogy always like really resonated with me. The idea that when we're shedding, when we're letting go, mm. it's not a aggressive process. Right. How did you learn to become compassionate and calmer with yourself? Because at first we can really feel like we're trying to break something off. Yeah. I think I, I tend to blame myself when mm. I can't let something go. I feel maybe something is my fault or I should have done more of this or less of that. And it starts to become, you know, just like a really, it, I, I kind of turn sad. Uh, one thing I've noticed when I watched the documentary back for the first time, I didn't even recognize that girl anymore. And it broke my heart because I was talking about my body and my image and, and I just hate that I ever felt those feelings. And I think because I have a younger sister, there's been this huge responsibility given to me in a way that has helped me. And I say this about my fans as well, or, or people that have, you know, grown with me, 
I've almost had to get back up every time, more so for them than myself. And that's something I've learned to really understand. It's it's healthy to want to be strong for other people, but I needed to recognize I needed to be strong for myself. And that took a while and it took things like making myself uncomfortable and changing my um, my thought process, changing the things I watch on TV, changing the music I'm listening to, little things that I can adjust that will perhaps change my mood or make me feel better instead of worse, you know? Mm, it is some of these small things, isn't it? Yeah. It, oh my gosh, I love scary movies, but I can't watch <laughs> them all the time. I'm like happy and I'm like, guys, let's watch a scary movie. Everyone's like, why? Why on earth do you want to do that right now? And you're kind of like, oh, yeah, you're right. Do they manage to persuade you? Yeah, yeah. most of the time. Yeah. But it was Halloween, so I got my way for, for a few weeks. You did? Yeah. <laughs> what did you end up watching? Oh, we watched Halloween. We watched um, Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street. Which one ruins your mood uh, the worst? Like, which one makes oh, it Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Probably, like, Hereditary, something really dark. Yeah. But it was it was fun. It was Halloween. We were yeah. just celebrating. Yeah. No, there's, I always call it cliffhanger chemicals. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like when we watch things that put us into states of anxiety oh, yeah. or stress. Mm -hmm. We release all these cliffhanger chemicals. Totally. And now you're like, well, why can't I sleep? Yep, like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Why yeah. am I having bad dreams? Yeah, Rabbi's like that. So my wife's like that. She, yeah. she can't, I have to, she always gets really excited to watch things like that yeah. too. I'm like, Riley, we can't do this because you will not <laughs> let me sleep for Aww, the rest of the night. That's so, so funny. Yeah. 